Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is part four of a four part series where we talked about building a sales funnel from scratch, what you need to know to actually build your funnel, how to choose the sales process that is perfect for your product. Then we talked about how to actually choose the tech that will go into your funnel. Next, we covered how to create a freebie that actually converts. And today I wanna to talk to you about the most important email that goes out after somebody opts into your email list. If you haven't watched the other three parts, I suggest that you pause this video and go and do that and then come back. So I will link them in order in the description below. However, if you are absolutely ready to go ahead and craft the perfect email that welcomes your new subscribers, then stick with me throughout this video because we're going to cover exactly what needs to be said within that first email. If you're new here, my name is Justine Havlin. I make videos every week to help you launch and grow an online business. Okay. So you've created an amazing freebie, you have it linked in your blog post or your YouTube video, and people are opting in. You've got an automated email set up to actually send them the freebie, but after that, you're not quite sure what to do. Or maybe you have a welcome email that's being sent out, but you're not sure that you've included everything that you need to include. What I wanna tell you is that there are five main points that you have to include. However, they don't all need to be stuffed into that first welcome email. You can actually use the first email that you send, which is the email that delivers the freebie, as well as the formal welcome email in order to cover these five points. So I'm gonna list off the five points and tell you a little bit about them, and then we're gonna talk about where they might fit in. But at the end of the day, there is not a perfect welcome email template because if there was, everybody would use it and I wouldn't be making this video right now. So even though there are these five things and I will give you some guidance as to where they go and I'll even tell you where I put them in my own, you will need to infuse some of your personality and do all of those things that you see people tell you about when you Google how to write a welcome series because that's what's gonna help you really craft your own tone and it depends on your audience, right? So create the email, see how people react to it, and then change it if you want to see how a different version works. Okay, so number one, and these are in no particular order, number one is to tell your brand story and your journey, basically why you do what you do. People want to know why you're doing what you do. As soon as you share a little bit about your background, you get a little bit vulnerable, people immediately connect with you on a deeper level and people buy from people that they trust. So even though it can be a little bit scary to get real and tell people your actual story of how you got to where you are, I would really encourage you to do so. The second thing is going to sound a bit icky when I say it, but it is the way it's said. So it's agitate the pain. Ugh, I hate that saying, but at the end of the day, everybody has some sort of pain or problem, which is why they're looking for a solution. And they want to know that you understand them. So you're not going to throw their pain in their face to make them feel badly or make them feel uncomfortable. But what you want to do is just reflect to them that you understand where they are. And that might sound simply like, hey, if you're here and you've downloaded this guide, I know that you are feeling blank. I know that you're stuck getting to blank and reflect to them where they are if they're the type of person who is looking for this particular guide that is going to bring them this particular outcome. Simply reflecting that to them is not only going to make them feel really comfortable, but they're going to know that their time isn't going to be wasted. We're all busy. We all have families and jobs and businesses and things that we need to get to. And how many times have somebody downloaded your lead magnet and never opened it? They might have thought, okay, I don't have time for this right now. And so if you can reflect to them that you know exactly where they are, they are far more likely to actually open it up, consume it, and get closer to solving their problem. Not only is their life better off, but they trust you because they've seen how amazing your actual work is and how you can potentially help them. Okay, so I hope that that made you feel a heck of a lot better about agitating the pain because that is the second point that I wanted to cover with you. Number three is something really simple, but I don't see a lot of people doing it, and that is asking them to reply. So when somebody is reading through your email, they are identifying with where they're at in their journey because you've reflected that to them in the previous step, and now, or potentially in the next email, you might wanna say to them, hey, ask some sort of question and ask them to reply. This really helps to build the relationship 
and you get so much value out of finding out what specifically people are struggling with when it comes to X. And X is obviously the thing that you help them solve. So you want this question to be relevant to uncovering their challenges in terms of the solution that you provide. So this needs to be really specific and it needs to be really intentional. It's not just a random question. Number four is ask them to connect with you on different social platforms. So even though it's amazing to have people on your email list and that is the goal, right? We wanna get people off social media and onto our email list. We also wanna tell them how else they can connect with us because a lot of the times we share different types of content on different types of platforms. And Instagram, for example, has a lot of behind the scenes and that really helps people see your personality and get to know you. So ask them to connect with you on other social channels and give the link so they can easily click and be taken directly to the page where they can follow or subscribe and join you on your journey on those other platforms. Number five, and another one that I see overlooked a lot, is what they can expect from you. Telling them what they can expect from you sets the stage for you to over deliver. Telling them that you'll be in touch with them weekly to provide them great content is a promise, but it's not a tall order. You're likely going to over deliver on that and they're gonna be blown away and absolutely love that they've chosen to subscribe to your email list. Okay, so we talked about five things that absolutely need to be included in those first two emails. So I definitely suggest including some of those points in the first email, which actually delivers the freebie. If you pack all of that into the welcome email, it's really, really full and people can get overwhelmed. So what I personally do is take the invite to connect on social media and take agitate the pain and put those into the first email. So in the first email, you're going to go ahead and deliver the freebie. And then right underneath, you can go ahead and reflect to them where they might be since they've gone ahead and downloaded this guide. Then at the bottom of the email, when you sign off underneath your name, you're going to put a PS and in the PS, you're going to invite them to connect with you on other social media channels. It's really important to ask them to connect, but putting this in the PS is a nice way to keep it out of the body of the email because the main point is for them to get the freebie and understand that you understand where they currently are in their journey. So those are the two things that should be in the body and we can ask them to connect on social in the PS. So that means that in the second email, which is the official welcome email, we want to tell them why we do what we do, give them a little bit of a glimpse into our journey. Then we wanna tell them exactly what to expect from us. And then we wanna close out the email in the last paragraph by asking them to reply, telling us their biggest challenge with X or their experience trying to do X so that we can start to build that relationship. The last thing I wanna say is that you can also include the PS in this email as well and again give them another reminder to connect with you on other social channels so if you have been wondering what the heck you are supposed to put in that first welcome email i hope you found this video helpful those are the five points that you need to sprinkle within the first two emails and i gave you a suggestion of what i personally do to actually create those first two emails but of course this is not the rule you need to go ahead and test it out for yourself see how it feels but at least it's a starting point so you're not totally overwhelmed about what to say and when to say it. I hope you guys enjoyed this four part series on building sales funnels and automating your business. And I look forward to seeing all of you guys in next week's video.